Hello, hello, hello again and welcome to this live streaming. I will continue our Olympic menu series and today I've come to a local restaurant in Beijing. This is a 24-hour restaurant and that, uh, the reason, biggest reason that we come here today is because many of the dishes that are now included in the Olympic menu, we can find them here at this restaurant. Now, once again, when entering this um, restaurant, what, what caught my eyes and my attention would be this, uh, let's say, um, the sacrifice table. This is General Guan. That's a real figure from the Three Kingdom period. That's roughly about 18, 1900 years, thousand, no, not thousand, 1800, no, 1900 years ago. Right over there, that's the, uh, the God of Fortune. And basically, they will serve some incenses every day uh, to, to worship for the best wishes that all, all these gods will bring to uh, the restaurant. Right over there is an open kitchen. Let's go and take a look. And you can clearly see what all these chefs are now busy in. That's right over there. Ready to be served. All the open kitchen. You see how these dim sums are cooked. Because this is a restaurant, it's a 24 hour restaurant where you can find all these major cuisines uh, in China. See, that's right over there. Stir vegetables and some noodles and some dumplings. It's a busy restaurant and this is still in the morning, not lunchtime yet, but still there are a lot of diners ready. And all these um, paper bowls sometimes are used for deliveries. Um, obviously, those are for dim sums. And I want to take a look at this one. The magic box. And this is something that I found this morning. And um, this is a serving robot. So basically what you do is, ooh, I, I, I cannot open it. I guess they would need some certain process uh, protocol to open this. Not everyone are now entitled to open the box. Basically, you, you put the, uh, the, um, the finish, the, the cooked dishes inside the box where they keep warm and you key in the number of table right over there. And then I guess press go. Yes, there is a start now and then the robot will bring all these warm dishes to a designated area where well it's close to the table all these dishes are to be served we'll see how it works in just a minute anything is going no not yet not yet but no Okay, we'll see if, it, if the, uh, the robot machine is working. Okay, let's Okay, three stories, so quite a few dishes to be contained inside. When the dishes are ready, put the main key in the number of the table. Then, yeah, okay. So then it goes. Let's see where it goes. Now there is one question I've been wondering about. I mean this is inside a you know, a restaurant, right? And how do you decide that the robot will go The, the way it is supposed to go. If you check out and you'll see these, those are the sensors and they, they decide the route that the robot will be going. And it's not like the robot will bring all these dishes to each table. They go to the designated area where the waitress will open the box and take out the warm dishes. Not this time though, this is a demonstration. But again, they're putting the used plates inside 
I guess she'll key in the designated number and it'll go back to the place where it started. I mean, technology, right? Technology. Again, let me uh, take you back to another area where I would like to give you some explanation. Well, that's the line you see a lot in Chinese communities. I guess they do line dancing, pretty much Southern Chinese style. Now, what I want you to take a look now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what I want you to take a look at is this, this table. This is pretty much because now China, the whole country is pretty much in the spirit of this Chinese New Year celebrations and people. This is also for the Chinese New Year um, uh, shopping season and people buy stuff to prepare for the New Year celebrations and uh, having a big feast. That's a very important part of Chinese people's uh, Chinese New Year celebration. So this is pretty much what you can find in the market. Uh, remember, uh, Chinese traditional New Year is for the family reunions. And sometimes in the old days, we gather around to have a big feast like what you do for Christmas and Thanksgiving. And that's also what we've been doing for thousands of years. And then in, in recent decades, I guess, people would choose to go out to eat together in the restaurant but you all know the uh, pandemic with that in mind probably it is not appropriate to go out to eat in a restaurant so what you can do is you bring the restaurant back to your own home and this is what you can find in the market you find all these readily prepared stuff and then you bring them back including what you can find in it is a swap but it will be full I guess uh, there will be stuff in, inside. This is fish. Why fish? This is a uh, glutinous rice kind of rice cake. Why fish? Because I mean using the sound of fish meaning surplus too. So wishing for a surplus in the coming new year. Now here is another site. Uh, these are all these um, I guess decorations you can find, you can buy in the market for your kids, for the family members. This is the dough figurine. Um, check out all these figures. See any figures that you're familiar with. I cannot tell all the names. Mickey Mouse. That, that's Minnie, right? That's Mickey. <laughs> Remember the, the coming Chinese New Year as the year of the tiger. This is supposed to be the tiger. Um, what is that called? Um, uh, what is it? Ultraman. Uh, okay. Uh, Ultraman. Ultraman. That's a Japanese cartoon character. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, this is like the, the cat police from Chinese cartoon. Uh, here is um, the Monkey King. Spiderman. They even have Spiderman over here. A lot of these figures, I don't know, I mean, I guess they must be popular with kids. And this is also a special corner where you can buy stuff. Uh, this is, I guess, from their partners of this restaurant. And, and these are the things that you can buy uh, from the market. All these New Year shopping selections. Now, we'll have, okay. Uh, there is one more thing. There is one more thing. There is uh, one um, type of dumpling that will be served. Uh, that is okay. Here it comes. Here it comes back. This time for real. Now there is one thing that I want your attention. This has been included in the Olympic menu where you can find this at the Olympic Village. Check out. Check out. Check out. This is. This time is real. This time is real. See, it will bring all these hot dishes, readily cooked dishes over here, and the waitress will bring them to the right table. Those are the dim sums. Now I'm going to take you to my table where uh, some of the dishes that are now included in the Olympic menu, uh, menu, no, <laughs> menu will be uh, served today. And I'm going to just give you some introduction at about well, what they are <clears throat> see what what do we have Whew. in about seven days time 
um, the Chinese New Year is coming. Actually, last night, um, the whole country, probably not the whole country, but uh, mostly in the north, that uh, people celebrated what we call Xiao Nian. I don't know how to translate that into English. It's more like a... Uh, uh, it's still like the the traditional Chinese New Year. It, it's pretty much like you know, seven days before the Chinese New Year's Eve, we are officially into the spirit of uh, Chinese New Year celebrations. Dim sum. Okay, getting ready. Now I want to um, introduce to you. Uh, the dishes that are now included in the menu. It's a uh, still in the morning and um, looks pretty busy here. The restaurant. Okay, there it is, right over here. Now, hang on, hang on. Let me let me find the. Uh, okay. Now, what we're expecting now are some of the dishes that are, that are now included in the Olympic menu. One is called the um, shrimp dumplings, and I'm sure you, you find that too in uh, some Chinese restaurants in your country. Uh, it's a popular item, shrimp item. This is uh, from the North and Cantonese style. The sh Shrimp dumplings are transparent and smooth. It is a traditional Cantonese dumpling served in dim sum. Dim sum. Heard about the name of dim sum? Hang on. Well, what is? Yes, dim sum. Hey Jesse again, Kenny. Uh, for myself, um, I drink coffee for my uh, breakfast and more tea after that. You're also coming for the Winter Olympics because uh, I remember uh, announcing the name when rehearsing for the opening ceremony. Uh, is it Alba? And uh, Deborah? Hello? Hang on. There is a problem with the uh, transmission. Okay. Okay. We're back. We're back. Hello, and and, and uh, we're still waiting for my hot dishes to uh, come. Hey, Deborah. <laughs> It's just a few days, nine days, right? That's the 4th of uh, February. Yes, we're still still waiting. Now, let me just give you some introduction of the names, at least, before we come to see the real dishes. And the first one is the shrimp dumpling. And there is even a Cantonese version of the name. Hak... Hak... Gao. Is it ha 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 ga? Not quite sure. Anyway, it's um you know you you, you all understand what what it is and with uh, shrimp dumplings. Um, what else? Second one. Hmm. They don't even have an English name for that. It's uh. It's just the um the Chinese. It's called the liu sha bao. What comes first is the shrimp dumplings. Check out. Check out. Let me let me take my. This one you need to be a fighter? Do you need to be a fighter? I mean, uh, hope this is not like a a, a torture <laughs> to you guys, because uh, I this here my tea. No, this is just hot water, which is just fine. Have you, uh, have you been to any uh, Chinese dim sum restaurants in your country? Well, no, no, um, 
uh, shrimp dumpling is not soup, du soup dumplings. You don't really expect to see soups inside. That's pretty much like the, the soup dumplings are what you find in the south, in either in Shanghai or in neighboring um, uh, Suzhou. Ooh, they even have a pad holding the dumpling. Looks good, looks good. Mm. So this is, see, looks like a lantern, huh? Hmm. Yes. Hang on. Uh, well, shrimp dumplings are stand. Shrimp dumplings are more like the Cantonese style. Or if you go find a um dim sum restaurant, <laughs> my mouth is watering. If you find a, a dim sum restaurant, you are most likely find that uh, able to find that. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> Linda misses the raw uh, pecan roll stock. Mm. You know what? It's all called dumplings, but there are there are different names in Chinese and um when you say dumplings, I guess you're referring to anything that's wrapped with some dough skins, right? But the the uh, the, uh, the feelings are totally different. The way that they are cooked, the way they are made, are also different. And 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 I guess the ingredients or the materials they use to cook them to make them are also different. Just to tell you one story. Well, this is actually jiaozi. It's also one dumpling. Um, Jiaozi is the dumpling that you see most in the north. Well, in the south, probably you'll see Huntun, which may come in different names. In Sichuan, it's called Chaoshou. In, 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 in Shanghai, my home time, it's called Huntun, but different, different names, different sizes. And I still remember one year that I uh, went to Xi'an. Remember the city famous for its terracotta? I remember that that one year that I was there traveling with a delegation and we were restaurant where they serve a lot of dumplings, meaning jiaozi, many ones, many versions. And they told us this is like a restaurant serving over 100 different types of jiaozi or, or, or dumplings, jiaozi dumplings meaning different feelings and um, it's many it's I don't know maybe like this uh, one third the size of the traditional ones and the proper ones and then when the first round of jiaozi when the uh, the first plates of jiaozi were served and then we thought okay this is way too small and probably we're gonna need more if you say we have 100, we're going to finish them all. To number 20, <laughs> we'll fall here to here. Anyway, uh, different types of jiaos or different types of restaurants. Uh, five Chinese restaurants near your place. Uh, where are you from, Glenn? <laughs> still checking. Still, still missing. Picking duck. Hmm. Yeah, and let me try, let me try, um, jiaozi, kind of, uh, hot, spicy. No, this is, uh, soybean sauce. Mm. Actually, they're good. One more, come in. Mm. This is yet another one included in the um, Olympic venue. Menu, not venue, menu. This is the um, Choi Sum. 
Chinese flowering cabbage. Uh, green leafy vegetable. You can see what they are, but you know, vegetable similar to Gailan. What are they? Okay, that's it's all in, in Cantonese, so I, I I'm not quite sure what they are referring to. Um. Anyway, this one, this is the stir fried chicken and walnuts with sauce. So this walnuts and that's chicken. But what is special here is um. Um, actually, at, uh, in the Olympic menu, not menu, menu, you don't really see walnuts in the dish, and I guess just in case people are um, allergic to that, they don't want to cause any allergy problems. Sticky dumplings. That's also again. Let me let, let me finish the introduction to this one, and then uh, we'll come to that. Uh, this is usually cooked with. Tianmian, okay, sweet flour sauce, Tianmian Jiao, or yellow bean sauce, and could make some comparison with Kung Pao chicken. Seriously? Okay, Kung Pao chicken, that's. I'm sure you, you can find that a lot in Chinese restaurants in near your place, I guess, Glenn. Chicken dumplings, chicken dumplings too. Uh, so let me try let me try that one first. This is walnut. Mm, chicken. Oh no. Supposed to be supposed to be for common use. Uh, mm. 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 Actually pretty good. A little bit sweet. Yeah, they do taste like um, kung pao chicken. That I guess with um, with the nuts. Pretty good. Mm. No, Jesse, I need you to fly to Beijing too to help me with the food on the table. Serena, Jefferson City, MQ, which state is, which city is MO? MO, which, oh no, which state is um, MO? Yeah, okay, let's come come to this one first. This is like, um, again, if you call it dumpling, yes, it is still a uh, dumpling because with stuffings inside, it's, it, it's like the um, uh, glutinous dumplings. It's sticky, a rice made of sticky rice doughs, and um, it's, it's uh, sweet inside. No, that's the uh, choi, choi, choi sum. That's choi sum. Okay, that's some some green. No, that's choi sum. What? Wow, wow, We'll come. We'll come do that. A lot coming up. This is one of my favorites. Um, actually, eat a lot of that uh, for the Lantern Festival, right? Lantern Festival. So we were basically finishing everything before even the Chinese New Year arrives. This is like your dessert, if you want. Mmm. 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 I like. I like this one. Blame, you would also want to come. <laughs> Here comes this one. This is another dish that are now in the on the list of the Olympic venue with a um, very interesting name. I'm sure you've also um, heard about this. It's called Lion's Head Meatballs. It's meatballs, but it's called Lion's Head. Why they're called Lion's Head, and use your imagination. Um, the braised lion's head meatballs have long been a noticeable gap in our repertoire 
with the Chinese New Year is upon us again. This classic is also a hot pick for many family reunion dinners. It can be eaten any time of the year, but is often served as a celebration dish. Even for us Chinese diners, that looks nice. Even for Chinese diners, this is like um, one of the major dishes they would order for big celebrations. If this is the new, looks like a bun. But let's let's come to this one. Wait. Even more information about the lion heads. There are two varieties of lion head meatballs. One version is plain, usually steamed or cooked in broth and served with napa cabbage. And one is red cooked. I guess this one is red cooked, bruised, braised in soy sauce. And some versions contain larger proportions of pork fat than others. And some added crab meat. Or paste to enhance the the taste. I guess I don't know if they have uh, crack uh, no crab meat inside. Uh, okay, you're already watching this, but let me have a taste of this first. Hmm. Because it's just to me, I can do whatever I want with all these utensils. They look good. I didn't have much for my breakfast, so this is just fine. Mm. Describe the ingredients, but there are a lot. Definitely not just meat. A lot of different stuffings in, in there. A lot of different ingredients. I don't know how to describe them, Glenn. I need you here to, to help me. And the description of all these dishes. And here is another one. <clears throat> hmm. They look nice. What are they called? Wait, 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 wait. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay. It's cabbage. Obviously, with chili, with nuts. Chestnuts, actually, uh, uh, for the Olympic event menu this time. Tell there are chestnuts, and if they are allergic with uh, chestnuts, Avoid them. Uh, chestnuts are a common snack all over China, but they're mostly cultivated in northern China. Beijing is also famous for this local produce. Chestnuts are a great winter snack as they are high in vitamin C and zinc, which helps boost the immune system to keep away those winter colds and flus. And they're also high in uh, what is potassium. Magnesium, iron, and no, I don't care about all that. What I care more about is the taste of it. I like chestnuts, and I like to have also a try of this. Any uh, of your favorites uh, in here on the table? Jesse, you sure about your? Chopsticks skills. We're from. We're from Jesse. Hmm. Hmm. Mm, Kenny, I'm not sure about whether meatball would go well with tomato sauce. Yeah, that's a new way of doing it. Probably I can try it myself next time. Hmm. So among all these um, dishes that are now served, 
today on the table. Which one is your favorite? Do you have any favorites? Oh, nice, Jesse. Good, good, nice, nice. I still remember you know, the first time that I I was in a Chinese restaurant. That was in in the UK because um, never had that experience before that. And then then I went there and I saw uh, um, when they serve chopsticks and there are actually a clear signs telling people how to use chopsticks and stuff. And to be honest, I I believe some of my friends back home in China that need that those signs to help them with the techniques of chopsticks. This is the right way to do it. I can always show my um, little technique with chopsticks. Uh, a little test time is um, if you can um, actually hold an egg. <laughs> That's even more difficult. Some small items like. Even smaller than this one. Mm. Let me check out this one. What is this? Wait. Um. What? What are they called? Ah, oh, this is the, the loose. This is different from what we saw. Uh, from the refrigerator. It's this is the loose ball, but how come there? Are they're kind of a black. They're telling me it's bamboo carbon carbonized or bamboo carbon styled Liu <laughs> uh, Shabo. Another once again, this is another type of dumpling. Um, this is which one I, that I mistaken for Liu Shabo? No, I didn't. The, that was um, the Liu Shabo. When you go to any uh, Cantonese restaurant, there are some dim sum dishes uh, that are a must, including this one. If I had to choose one, it would be shrimp dumplings is one of them, and this is the Liu Sha Bao, but carbon, bamboo carbon. Never, probably have seen it. Yeah, it's milk infused bun, super moist, feathery. Uh, there are also salted egg yolk in it. Let me just try. Too much description. Um, better put it here, not to mix with the vinegar. If you check out, I mean, looks does look like um carbon. Okay, my colleagues are telling me the right way. Oh. That's fluid inside egg yolk. Um, it's more or less like if it is hot inside, it could be dangerous, right? And this is more like the uh, the soup soup um, dumplings that you find a lot in the uh, in the south. Hmm. Mm hmm. Indeed, they do look delicious and they taste delicious too, uh, Darius. Yummy. <laughs> uh, salt egg yolk. Yes. Yes. You're right, Kenny. You're right. I mean, they taste the same. I mean, they look black, dark, but taste is still good. The taste is still good. Mmm. What else? Um, again, there is one dish that will be served in Chongli, which is the um, uh, the snow sports area where you see a lot of skiing uh, events. 
but it won't be served in the in Beijing in the city center. I'm still checking which one, which one is to be served in Chongli, but not in Beijing. Okay, that's the one, the one that I had a taste of, the uh, jiaozi, but it's not just any jiaozi. It's cold water. They cold. They are called dumplings in red oil. This is more like the Sichuan style. Could be spicy, but um, I just had a taste of it. It's not that spicy. I guess it's been neutralized for uh, international diners. Um, was <laughs> even even for this a dish has a history. It was first produced in 1893. I don't know how to keep a track of that. Uh, <laughs> this is um. It's it's like the traditional one of the traditional snacks that you'll see a lot on. It's like the street food. You see it a lot in 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 Sichuan in Chengdu. If you have the opportunity to to visit it, yeah, Glen. I've I've seen that too. All these um, directions. Hmm. Um. Yep, it's uh, the fillings are made of uh, pork and, uh, and and purely just pork. When you say red oil, it's I guess it means a spicy oil. And um, look red, looks red, and it's uh, it also spicy. Uh, it has a name. Of Zhong Shui Jiao, guess his name from the street food vendor who created it hundreds of years ago. You see a lot of that. Let me uh, let me try another one. I have a lot to, you know. How does it feel? It doesn't really feel good. I mean, you have the whole table for yourself. <laughs> This is a table where you're supposed to share the food with your friends. What that is why the table is round, right? It's um, it's um. The vibe is basically for you to talk to everyone. You can see everyone. Everyone is near you. Hmm. Hmm. Is it spicy? <coughs> This is a um, restaurant located in the um, northern part, not far from the Olympic Village. I guess a few kilometers away, and um, in just a few days, nine days, I guess to be exact, um, there will be the opening ceremony of the Winter Olympics. After six years of preparation, Beijing is now ready to welcome friends from around the world and there are a few delegations who have already checked in in the Olympic Village and when I came here this morning there is even one Olympic lane uh, um, on the way here uh, which are designated for all Olympic delegations and uh, we can clearly I could see this morning that all uh, vehicles driving on the way Are now making way for the uh, Olympics, and citizens in Beijing are now also expecting, um, excitingly, for the arrival of the Olympic uh, event. Uh, this is the second, yet the second uh, Olympic uh, Olympics after the 2008 Summer Olympics. Also, the first city in the world that hosts. Both Olympics, the, both the Summer and the Winter Olympics. By the way, by the way, if I can mention that, if you watched the opening ceremony of the 2008 Summer Olympics, probably there is a voice you've ignored, but that's my voice. I, I was one of the announcers announcing the opening and closing ceremonies of the Summer Olympics in 2008. Check out this year. See if you can still hear my voice. Mm.
Yeah, I was I was the uh, English voice for the opening ceremony of the Summer Olympic uh, opening ceremony in in Beijing in 2008. Also the Paralympics too. And with that, I guess I need some more time. I don't, don't want to torture you anymore with all these dishes that you can see on your phone but won't be able to have them in person. But hopefully uh, in the future, you will be able to come to visit China, to come to visit Beijing or Chengdu or any Chinese cities. And then you can have a little taste in person of all these delicious cuisines uh, of different styles in China and um, I have to say my favorite my favorite they're all my favorites but my favorite this is one of my, my favorites and also um, the sweet dumplings or what we call the yuan shells they're great they're great uh, they're nice but mm, maybe not pretty much my thing Jesse, you thought of that? <laughs> mm. All right, uh, once again, thank you very much for your time. And I don't know what time zone you're in, but probably you, you need to go back to your next um, dinner time. And I'm going to uh, spend, spend my, my time uh, a bit longer over here to finish, try to finish some of them. Definitely, I'm going to finish my yuan shells, my sweet dumplings right over there. So thank you once again and uh, bon appetit to myself and all the best wishes for the Chinese New Year. All the best. See you next time. Bye.